Do you dare, my brothers and sisters, be a playful force? Do you dare to be both? First, I'm going to focus on force. Do you dare to be a force in this world or will you stay to yourself? Will you keep your life force to yourself? Will you not dare to step on people's toes, to insult, to risk offending another person? That is my question for you today. If you do choose to grab life, to be pro-life, to be life affirming that life is worth having and it should not just fill you, but seep out of you, overflow from you and share your love and your kindness and all the fun and all of the play. If you want that overflowing, first thing you have to do is come into contact with your future self. You have to be accountable to something more than simply this moment. If you are only accountable to this moment, well, then it is down to impulse and you can be convinced of silly little things because we do have a bias for prioritizing the short-term pleasures. We do have a bias for t- like taking the five euro today instead of the hundred euro next year. We do have a bias for taking the one marshmallow now instead of taking the two marshmallows in 10 minutes. This delayed gratification is one of the biggest predictors of life success. And we cannot do that. We cannot measure ourselves in terms of years if we are only simply looking at ourselves in terms of days or perhaps weeks. So do you want to talk to yourself in terms of years, perhaps even in terms of generations, if that life truly flows beyond you? So, To come into contact with your future self, you're going to have to treat it as a person. And as a person, you're going to have to understand that no matter what truth this future version of you tells you, the the actual truth, the reality of it, will always go beyond that. Will always go beyond that. That's point number one. Point number two is that you have to allow that person to simplify themselves. Because to communicate to you, For your perception, for your understanding of them, no matter who it is, no matter what it is, we simplify each other just to make it more bite-sized, to make it more understandable, and that's totally natural. Also, when we're communicating, when we're talking, we have to simplify ourselves to, I could tell this story 10 different ways, but I don't. I tell it one way. I value your time. I'm not being selfish with this time. Hopefully not. Hopefully I'm offering something to you in my words and I carry you along on this journey. So I have to simplify it down. And then you, as the listener, perceiving all of this, is simplifying it down to understand it in your language. That's point number two. Point number three is to remember point number one, that the truth will always go beyond that simplicity. That that simplicity is true, has a truth in it, but never captures the whole truth. That is what it is to treat your future self like a person. Now, nobody likes to be simplified, but if we do not, if we do not understand this paradox, we will either get stuck in the infinite, all the possibilities, all the potentials, all the what ifs and all of the rest, and never bring it down to earth. Or we will get stuck in the earthly, stuck in the facts, stuck in the how are you defining this and all of the rest, and never understand that the truth goes beyond it. To understand both of these, is what is needed to meet your future self, to treat them as a real force in the world and to come into contact with them, to defer to them, to be accountable to them and to allow yourself to forgive yourself for the mistakes because it's for this future, to forgive other people, to apologize to other people, to apologize to yourself because again, you are accountable to this bigger mission, to this future, to this something that goes beyond this simple moment, this simple day, this simple week. You are planning in years Perhaps you are saving money. Perhaps you are building reputation. Perhaps you are building your job or your side project, your side hustle. Perhaps you are building hobbies. Perhaps you are building your skills, your technical skills, your hands. It might be your head knowledge. It might be your procedural knowledge. It might be your perspective knowledge as in you're you're learning, you're growing this way of shifting, of, of just testing things out. This is what we do when we're teenagers and we're constantly shifting how we think and how we feel and what if this and what if and all of those kind of explorations is to try all these different lenses, try on all of these different hats to kind of feel out who we are. But that doesn't stop at teenage years, of course not, no. So always, 
to apologize for these steps because to make any step forward, we have to risk stepping into the unknown and the unknown might contain a risk. But it's not a risk, it's uncertainty. A risk can be measured. A risk is not. A risk is, is still known. Uncertainty, real uncertainty, really taking that step. I don't know what's going to happen, but I will digest it as it comes, is to come into contact with uncertainty, which is to come in contact with another person. So again, this is our true selves. Now, with all of that understood, I want to get down to the bones. I want to get down to the meat of this video. What questions should you ask yourself when trying to come into contact with this future self to make yourself a force, to make yourself accountable to something beyond the simple, beyond this simple moment of pleasure and fear? Something that endures, something that has presence, has vitality to it. What questions should you ask? One, what age are they? That's important. How far ahead are you planning? Are you planning for your 30 year old self? Are you planning for your 40 year old self? Are you planning for 60, 70? Are you going to be the wise old man? Are you going to be the kooky mad professor? What version, what age are you speaking to? Then the four pillars of life, family, friends, work and hobbies. How do they feel about these? What exactly are they aiming for? What do they wish they would have? And how does that feed into their mission where they are now? Do they wish they had better connections with their families, more friends, more hobbies? Perhaps that they worked a bit more and that they could kind of, um, that they'd have the degrees, they'd have the paperwork now. Perhaps, I don't know. Ask those questions. Family, friends, work, hobbies, four pillars of life. How does that older version of you feel about that? First two questions, age, four pillars. Third, what experiences are you having at the moment? Older version of me, what experiences? Like what is your felt sense of life at the moment? What are you aiming for? What's your next thing on the bucket list? What is your, what is the experience that you're kind of aiming towards that you're really wanting to feel? Are you aiming for the holiday? Are you aiming for the, the grandkids to give, like to have like a camping trip with them? Are you aiming for uh, some sort of community engagement? Are you aiming for some project? Are you like, what's the, where are you in life? What experiences do you wish you had? Do you wish you had traveled more? In this, where you are now, with the experiences you're looking for, what experiences do you wish you had? this older version of me? Do you wish you had traveled more, gone camping, been out more in nature, been at one with your body, understood your body a bit more, taken your health a bit more seriously, had fun with it along the way perhaps? So, age, four pillars of life, experiences. Last one, traits. What traits are you working on at the moment? We will always be working on ourselves, trying to make ourselves more confident, more assertive, more humble, more wise, more vital. Perhaps as an older version of me, I want to cont I want to hold on to that vitality, that zest for life. Do not go quietly into that dark night, as William Blake once said. What traits are you working on at the moment? trying to be a bit more fun, a bit more imaginative, a bit more creative, a bit more disciplined, a bit more structured, perhaps. And also, what traits do you wish you had worked on on the way up? So, age, four pillars, experiences and traits. Ask this of your future self. Understand that that future self, their responses will be simplified. It will not be the complete work of what that future self is. That future self is going to be a moving target here. You And as is anyone you speak to, all of us are moving targets. So treat it like a real person and understand that they will simplify themselves. You will simplify them. You will not get the full picture, but by getting all of these little simplifications, you will start to get the constellation. You will start to see the person beyond all these simple moments. And then you'll really feel them then you'll really have that whisper on your shoulder of, you got it, you got it kid, you're good, you're going, you're in the right direction. You could do better here. I want you to do better here. I love you no matter what, but 
because you're me, I'm hardly going to give out. Like, I, as in, the giving out isn't coming from this, like, you know, uh, it's coming from the frustration of love. And you're going to have that voice and you're going to understand it at a felt sense. So yes, you're going to get the words which might be a bit judgy, which might be a bit you should do, you shouldn't do. You might get that, but you're going to get the felt sense behind it where you're going to feel that. I want you to be as much as you can be because vitality, life, overflowing, life affirming. We want to be a force in the world. Now, I did promise you at the start of this video to be a playful force. And maybe the older version of you is a bit sour, is a bit droll, is a bit ugh. He's a bit miserable, perhaps. You should do, you gotta do, the world needs you. Oh, you got that very, um, that very productive judge, very judgy judge, perhaps. So, to be the playful force, if you dare, perhaps we stop here. Perhaps I've stretched your imagination far enough for today. And if so, please stop here. Take a moment, do the work, do, ask these questions, write it down on a sheet of paper, get those thoughts out of your head onto a piece of paper, you'll feel better for it. But if you want to take the next step, if you want to do the full integration here, ask those same questions to your eight-year-old self. What age are you? Eight, maybe six, maybe 10, maybe 12. Roughly there, what age are you? Family, friends, work, hobbies. As a kid, what do you hope older me does? What like what are you what are you looking for? What do you hope life gives you? Experiences. What do you want to do? What would you love to do? Traits. Fun, playful. Ask that kid. Age. Four pillars. Experiences. Traits. And understand that those two versions of you are different, but they are both housed in here. And by having that opponent processing by having that like little debate, by having that bit of fun, you will have both. You will have the force and you will have the play. And you'll be able to enjoy this whole journey along the way, hopefully. And yes, of course, you're going to err on one side or the other every now and then. Of course, all of this is going to happen. It's going to be a work in progress. We will forever be a work in progress. The moment we're finished, we'll be finished, you know? So, Fleshing out those characters though, having those in your head, having that in your council of sages, having that as just a voice on your shoulder so that in the moment you feel the love and you feel the judgment and you feel the kind of like the oomph and you, you feel so that you are a force with this overflowing life and you are playful and you are enjoying the journey. I hope this video reaches you well. I hope you are having a great week and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Enjoy guys. Bye.